Tuesday, April 29th. The streets of Saigon, usually jammed with traffic at the morning rush hour, are quiet. The attack by communist aircraft at Saigon's Tansunut Airport the day before has prompted a 24-hour curfew. And the only people on the streets are ambulance drivers and policemen. With communist forces only a few miles from the center of Saigon, the order to evacuate American nationals is given. Americans and citizens of third countries who have been guaranteed space on the airlift gather at assembly points for the bus ride to Tansunut Airport. But the buses have to be abandoned when helicopters at Tansunut come under fire from both communist and South Vietnamese troops. Heavy shelling at the airport destroys planes on the ground and American Marines are killed by rocket fire. Journalists filming the action from the roof of their hotel see a South Vietnamese helicopter shot down near the grounds of the presidential palace. At least 10 people die in the crash. The American ambassador Graham Martin took personal control of the evacuation. Marines used smoke to signal helicopters they should land on the lawn behind the embassy walls where they would be protected from ground fire. For the frightened civilians, the first few hundred feet were the most dangerous. After that, they were out of range of rifle and pistol fire. The hardest part was the waiting. Many people said it was unnerving to be waiting for a ride to safety and to be hearing fighting all around you. There was always the fear that the fighting would end the helicopter. Those South Vietnamese not lucky enough to have been chosen for evacuation defied the curfew and stood outside the embassy gate, begging for a seat on the helicopters. Many of these people have relatives in Canada. Some carried visas issued by the Canadian embassy in Saigon. But for most, it wasn't enough to get them a ride out. Embassy officials feared the crowd might again storm the gate, so they called in Marine reinforcements. The tension mounted as more and more Americans arrived in the compound and began the nerve-wracking wait for a way up. Americans who in better times flocked to the embassy pool for relaxation were back again. But this time they were anything but gay. As evening approached, Ambassador Martin emerged to join the others in making the flight to an American aircraft carrier some 40 miles offshore. More than 80 helicopters shuttling people out to the carriers. Everyone was searched before being allowed to join the other evacuees. South Vietnamese Army pilots flew their families to safety aboard the carriers as well. But because there wasn't room to store their helicopters, as well as those flown by American pilots, the Vietnamese were forced to ditch their aircraft at sea. The pilots were picked up by American Navy rescue boats.
dusk fell on Saigon, helicopters were still taking people out of the embassy compound. In all, approximately 7,000 people, most of them Vietnamese, were airlifted to safety during the 12-hour operation. Desperate Vietnamese remained at the embassy gate, hoping against hope that they too would be evacuated. But for them, there was to be no flight to safety.